Page 165. This is a chord study in D major. We're simply using the primary chords. That's all. Well, if you think about each chord as one unit and not three separate notes, it makes playing and reading the music a lot easier. So let's look it over. It's four lines long, treble bass clef, two sharps in the key signature. Makes sense because we're studying the key of D major. The scales do D major and B minor both. Do the and the arpeggios too. And we're in cut time. Now normally when I start learning a piece in cut time, I turn it into four form. I pretend it's in four four time first because it makes the rhythm easier to figure out. And then once I have the rhythm and I, I'm ready to do the speed, then I can put it in cut time. But I look through this, and there's nothing but half notes and whole notes here. Well, in that case, I can just leave it and cut time, because a half note gets a beat. It's just one, two, one, two, one, two. So we'll just talk about this as though it's in cut time. Now the hands, I'll take them together, because you're just doing the chords. You got the one chord. They put the Roman numerals under the bottom staff. That's where they usually put the numbers. The name of the chord is above the staff. That's typical that you find in a lead sheet or something where a guitar player or somebody could play along with you. So the D chord is the one chord in D major. And the left hand plays that. And then you have to come down here. In the third major, it's here, and then thumb, and here. It's an octave. You need to develop a feel for octaves, uh, what it feels like to physically, because you're going to get them a lot. You're going to get them a lot, and you want to eventually get to where you can feel it. You don't even have to look at the keyboard. You know what that feels like. You know what it is. Okay. Second line, measure four. Now it's the four chord, or the G chord. Third line, back to the one chord. Now the five seven chord. Got to watch that top note. They changed it, huh? And then the one chord on the last line. Right hand now comes up. I had a habit on this ending in this right hand because I'm in this position. I had a habit. I just reach up because the whole thing is this. And if you're doing the arpeggio, that's the fingering you're using. I hope that I just reach up and do two five. You have a whole measure rest. You can. You got time, and you can play it here or here, depending on whether you want your hand up here or not. Because I like to stay out here. But out of habit, I just do, the, you'll get this a lot in music where you play one note and then you play the other notes in the chord later and I just reach up. I don't move. So the last two measures is here, move, and here, here. However, you can use the fingering in the book or your teacher will suggest what you need to do. As far as the articulation goes, they give you a few accents on the top note. Just play the top note a little louder. but okay. Dynamics, they suggest MF. That's a forte. Again, this is one of those things which you can play at most any dynamic, and I would encourage you to work on it at really, really, really super soft. Without the soft pedal, of course. We want how soft can you play these? And still get them down at the same time. The tricky part here is you want to be very light, but you have to be firm enough to get all three notes down together. See, I'm not all together here. They're not together. You can hear one note's a little off sometimes. So you want to be very light, and yet get that notes down at the same time. I would encourage you to work on that here rather than playing it loud. You know, they give you a crescendo at the end. Again, I think learning to play this really super soft will do you a lot more good than playing loud. Speed with energy, that's not a speed. Just think one, two, one, two, and then one. Just that. How fast can you do that accurately? That will be probably your speed throughout. Now they've added pedal. I kind of like it without pedal because you can hear everything. You can hear, do I get these notes down at the same time or not? You can hear it better without pedal. But they've added it, so let's talk pedal. It's overlapping pedal. The hands do their thing first and then the pedal. At the beginning, you push the notes down, then the pedal immediately after. 
the idea is I want to start the sound before I release the overtones. So the sound kind of grows out there. Here. Change the pedal after I play the notes in the next measure. And I'm changing it because I'm changing the harmony. I'm changing chords. There's an RIT there too if you want to slow down. And that's pretty much it with the pedal. You're overlapping the pedal a little bit, but it only a little bit because the ear doesn't mind if it's only a little bit. Otherwise, you're mixing the harmony. And that doesn't work. But you can get away with it if you do it immediately after you play the notes. You know, immediately after it happens fast enough, that's okay. It just ensures there's always sound because if you try and do it right when you do it, a lot of times you'll you'll be a little off and you could actually put in silence where you don't want silence. Now if I did want silence at the end of each line, because each line is a phrase here, I would lift the pedal with the hand, so a little just like taking a breath, a little bit of silence before going on. interpretation. How do you interpret it? Well, you experiment. You try things out. This helps to force you to listen to the music. You're not just mechanically playing these notes and doing this, what the music says. You're getting into the music. You're expressing yourself with the music. That's what it's all about. That's where most of making music is. is. This, this other stuff is just mechanical junk to get out of the way. Let's play this together very slowly, just to make sure you got the right chords and all. I'm not going to pedal it, because you, you can hear it fine without the pedal. I'll give us two counts, because it's only two beats in a measure. I'm just going to go ready, go, and every beat is a half note, because it's in 2-2 two, two time. Ready, go.